Hello, welcome to live lunch with my father's house, Las Vegas. Lunch live, 12, 10 p.m. with Pastor. Pastor Jose Antonio not able to be at this particular live lunch because they are in another meeting at, at this same time. So I am fortunate and uh, very happy to be with you at this lunch uh, moment. Um, we're gonna spend about 15 minutes together. Uh, hopefully um, we'll be real close to that time so you get to enjoy your lunch if you're taking lunch today. Um, so I wanna go ahead and uh, uh, share with you a little bit of the story and the word of God. Um, I love, um, love the testimony, the power of God's stories because they're not just back then, they're right now. They translate into today. Um, God is relevant and his truth is relevant because truth remains the same. Um, okay, so one of the main things, and what we're calling this today is, I am a servant. And if there's one main thing that I feel like my journey with Jesus has been about, um, is about being a servant. Um, something that I have struggled with, and something that I'm always, to this day, 40 years, 40 plus years later, walking with him, still being called to and taught about because it's such an awesome, huge, big part of him. Um, he came to, not to be served, but to serve. So while we're here, we are, um, in many sense, in many senses, a servant. Um, you didn't get to choose where you were born, what time you were born, um, what race you are, uh, your sexual, who you, with your sex. You, you didn't choose any of those things. Your family, you were placed. So you're not in charge. And, you're responsible for what you've been given, but you're not king. Um, somebody else is in charge. Um, and maybe that's why there's a lot of confusion out there when people don't like the way things are and they try to change it. But the point is, we're gonna serve somebody, as the old song says. Um, this is from the perspective, I am a servant. This is gonna be from the perspective of somebody you may not think would be saying this. But let me read the story to you. I'm going to be in uh, Matthew chapter 8, 5 through 10. It's a famous, awesome uh, tale in the uh, um, Gospels. And we're going to hit it at a couple of different uh, Gospels because it's mentioned in two of them. One's in Matthew and one's in Luke. <clears throat> so I'm just going to read the story to you, okay? Thank you for joining us. This is Matthew 8, 5. And when Jesus was entered to Capernaum. So Jesus is in town. Jesus is on the scene. He's come in. There came unto him a centurion, beseeching him. <clears throat> that word is awesome because it means he was invoking the name of Jesus. It doesn't say what his name is right here. But we know that his title is, he's a centurion. Uh, over a hundred men. Oh, by the way, this is kind of interesting. Centurion, I looked it up denotes a military officer commanding from 50 to 100 men, according to the size of the legion of which it was a part. So a legion is obviously more. That was his part, was the centurion part, was 50 to 100 men. So he knew what it was to deal with legion. He was a part of the legion. That's just a little interesting side note there. He is beseeching Jesus. That word means he's invoking the name of Jesus. The most powerful name and title and respect um, in heaven and earth and below <laughs> is that name. It is earned respect. To his foes, he has earned respect. The Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Whether they know him, love him, serve him or not, every knee will do that. Now that's respect. It will do that. But notice what it says. Jesus is Lord. And that's also been something where it's like, God is really, through my journey with him, I remember being saved, and I remember struggling a lot. And then I went ahead and said, you know what? You're not just my Savior. You're my Lord. Meaning you are my Master. And if he's my master, that makes me a servant. The title of this is, I am a servant. And that's a thing we all struggle with, where we allow our 
ourselves to serve the Lord or even another person or even obeying our parents or even obeying the government or even obeying um, our boss we really struggle with stuff like this and that's why that's a journey that God takes us through and let me continue so he invoked he called upon the name of Jesus this is why saying by the way the name of Jesus Savior saying Lord my servant notice my servant lies at home sick of the palsy I don't know what the palsy is but it was bad and the Bible says he said grievous grievously tormented so he watched this boy or girl or servant or young man or woman tormented and this was his servant and Jesus said to him I will come and heal him everything's done right great he's gonna come heal him but there's more there's so much more he stopped Jesus he said Lord I am not worthy that you would come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed he stopped Jesus he said, no I'm not worthy of that all you got to do is this and then he gave his reasoning as a centurion I am a man under authority I'm a servant And I've got soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. He cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. You just have to speak the word. And that's literally, at first he stopped Jesus, right? No, you don't have to come. That literally stopped Jesus. And the Bible says it caused Jesus to marvel. When he was literally stopped, not just, no, don't come to my house physically. No, it literally stopped God. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. Wow, he marveled God. And said to him, and said to them that follow. In other words, there's other people around in the scene. Truly I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, I have found it. In the entire country of Israel, my people, set apart from my name, that we birthed through the, through the wilderness, through Abraham, I have not seen this. Let's break this down. What we have here is a centurion saying, I'm a servant. See, the title is, I am a servant, and it was literally the centurion speaking that's what I am. In Luke 7, 8, when we break it down here, the other gospel rendition of it, in the, in the gospel of Luke, for I am also a man that says it like this. <clears throat> this is centurion talking. I'm a man set under authority. What does it mean to be set under authority? Somebody put me there. I didn't have the choice. <laughs> I mean, they wanted the position, but I got put there. Almost like a job, but really, what I said in the beginning, did you choose certain things about your life? You didn't. You were set there. You may try to change it. Praise God. Certain things were supposed to change. You know, we're supposed to try to um, do more for God. We don't have to remain in a certain place. We're supposed to believe God and, and get closer to him, go up higher. But check this out. I'm set in this place. I'm not in charge. I am a servant because I'm serving and I'm set under authority. When you look that up, it means this. I've been put in place. <laughs> Somebody put me in my place. They put me in my station. They set me in a certain, let me read it, to place in a certain order, to arrange, to assign a place, to a point. I know I'm a servant. I recognize what it is to be a servant. Before I'm a centurion, I know I'm here to serve, and I'm serving Rome. And I have soldiers under me. 
Why? Because I have obeyed being a servant and trusted. They gave me people to train also. Just, I guess I'm doing a good job. I'm over 50 to 100. And I could say that this one go and he goes, another come and he comes. And to my servant, do this and he does it. I recognize you're a servant, Jesus. I recognize you have authority as a servant. That when you say things, they happen. I don't have this authority over this policy. I don't have this authority over the thing that's tormenting someone I love, my servant. But I know you do because I recognize it because I'm a servant too. And I see that you have authority. And I love my servant. And I know when you have authority, the Bible says that was unique about Jesus. They, they, Jesus threw people because he spoke as one with authority. He spoke as one who was here to serve, and he's serving somebody. And it wasn't necessarily to please the people, <laughs> but it was to please his father. And things happened when Jesus said it. He spoke. He said, come, it came. He said, go, it went. I recognize the authority of Jesus. I recognize the servant. I want to read a little bit about when he said the word, when I speak to my servant. See, I'm a servant. When I speak to my servant, do this and he does it. The Bible says in Romans 13, 1, let every soul, this is Bible, be subject unto the higher powers. To authority. For there is no power but of God. And powers that are be, that be, they're ordained by God. I'm not saying all government is perfect and all authority is perfect. I'm saying the concept of authority and serving is perfect. And it's from God. The word is a Greek word. Um, I can't say it perfectly, but it's dual yulo, and basically it means, check out what a servant means. And this is why people struggle with this, and this is why I struggle with it as a new Christian, but I ended up submitting to being a servant and saying, Lord, help me to serve you. Be my Lord. Not just my Savior, but you're my Lord. To be a slave. Oh boy. The word means to be a slave. Literally, or figuratively, involuntary or voluntarily to be in bondage. Paul said, I'm a bond servant of Jesus. I may be in chains in Rome, but I'm not in chains to Rome. I'm serving, I'm the prisoner of Jesus. I'm his prisoner. When that happened, and Jesus said, go your way, the Bible says in that hour, that servant was healed. That centurion what was an enemy to his servant now became God's enemy. When Jesus is your Lord, the things that come against you got to deal with him. See, you're under the master. You're under his authority. You're serving him. And if it comes to stop you, it's going to deal with him <laughs> and his authority. And that illness had to deal with with the master, the one who had authority over it. Because he submitted himself. He invoked the name of Jesus. You know, all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus. When we invoke his name, he's got mercy for us. He knew he didn't have authority there, but he knew who did. And Jesus called this kind of relationship of serving, he called it faith. I haven't found this kind of faith all in all of Israel. You know, religion's a set of rules bound by laws. But the relationship of faith says, I'm bound by what you say. I trust you. And I am bound by you, what you say. I remember the whole Bible looking at it as a teenager. And I didn't, couldn't say I believed everything. But after I got saved and I knew Jesus was real, I believed in him and what he had to say. So I would start off with what Jesus said. And then I would realize... It's the word of God, which means it's all Jesus. And I submitted more and a little more and a little more, trusting the word that you say. 
that's the type of relationship. I want to end this soon. Maybe. <laughs> but I'm going to try. Um, we talk about the prodigal son and how he said in his heart, and then he said to his, from his heart he said, my, my father's servant's got it better than I got it. And in his heart he goes, I'm going to go to my father and say, Lord, Father, make me like one of your servants. But the father received him back as a son, but it wasn't until he had the heart of a servant. It wasn't until he came back with an attitude of, make me a servant. I'm not worthy. Like the centurion, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be your son. Make me a servant. And when that attitude hit him, he came back as a son. Jesus is the son of God, but he came to serve. The name of Jesus can be called upon, but will we believe him to be our Lord and our master and be a servant to him? You know, if you serve Jesus, you're going to serve other people because he cares about them and he loves them. I want to finish by saying this. The power to serve Jesus is to have patience, loving kindness, tender mercy, and long-suffering to serve other people. There was a young man and this young man had an addiction. And the addiction was to games. And I heard the cry of a father towards his son. And I just was done. I had no, I'm not a game member. I, I, I felt like I had no authority there. But the cry of the father for his son would not leave me alone. It was God, the father's heart towards his son. And when I was done and I gave up on this young man, that burden would hit me. And I'd have to go pray and I'd have to go seek God. And I'd have to get on my knees. And I'd have to serve God. I had a love for that son that was being put in me by that father. And when I gave up, the love of that father never gave up for that son. And we met with that son, the father and I. And we would share the word of God with him. And the addiction broke in his life. We saw this kid change. You know, this day, I don't know if he's serving the Lord. I know his heart is towards God. But he's not a gang member. And he doesn't want to serve that spirit. The power in being a servant of the Lord is awesomely crazy ridiculous. And I love it. Because the, the centurion's attitude was, I love this my servant, because I'm a one. So, I want to thank you for joining us today. We have resources at mfhlv.com. You can check them out. They're free. We have these live lunches all archived in there. And we love you, and we're happy to be here to serve the Lord by loving his people and serving you in Las Vegas and the world, now, wherever this goes. Thank you. We're going to dismiss by blowing a kiss to the Lord God Almighty as his sons and servants. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God.